Hello again and welcome back to the Hangout Hobbyists. Today we're having a quick look at some new mediums I've got. I was going to go straight into painting but I got these new mediums. I need to find out what they're like so um, I thought we'd have a quick play. What I have is acrylic iridescent medium for a pearlescent effect from Winter Newton. Bleo metal varnish. And Bleo metal medium. So what I've done is I've prepared a number of old bases that I will be painting. They've been quickly airbrushed with a matte varnish. I'm making sure that because I'm going to be using different paints and mediums I've got my dirty water ready to go. And my little piece of kitchen towel. Just move the mediums further out of the way. And a little bottle that I may well put some of the iridescent medium in later but the iridescent medium is a very thick medium so I don't want to put it straight in. I'm going to get a larger brush for this job because I'm not being that finicky and to start off with I'm just going to get a standard black base and I'm going to paint some iridescent medium on it. If I show you under here you can see how thick it is. And then I'm just lightly painting the surface of the base making sure I've got good coverage. This video will be slightly more blocky because my videos are usually likely to be recorded in one shot but this one things are going to need time to dry then we're going to need to come back and look at them. So it's going to be mul multiple shots with a time lag. So I'm going to clean my brush off. It's a bit harder to see when it's clean with this stuff. And put that to one side for now. The reason that I'm concerned about how thick it is, is airbrushing and it says on the front, don't thin it too much with water. Next base, so the furthest is iridescent medium. Good problem now, so I'm gonna go into my wet palette. Sorry for the additional glare. So, metal medium. That might be a bit thick. So, just going to clean it off my brush. And thin it down a bit. And again, I'm cleaning that off. Now the metal varnish 
I don't know how much it will create a metal effect. It's not a medium, it's a varnish. Give it a good quick shake. It's always a good idea to shake your paint. So a single drop of metal varnish, another little base. And we'll see what effect that has when it's not connected to anything. So we have three just straight plane on a black base. Clean off the brush. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a nice colour. I have just ordered a lot more colours. I've ordered a pack from Scale 75 um, to try out of 48. So if you remember what I was saying about having lots of colours to work with in a previous video, I've started down that process. Now normally I would thin these out a bit, but because I'm not using it on a miniature, I want it to be fairly visible and thick. I'm also going to use a larger base for these so that I can have one side with medium, one side without, and we can see what the effect is. So having bases like this, just so you can experiment, isn't a bad idea. And resetting them is as easy as just airbrushing another layer of um, undercoat over the top. I've actually redone, so the ones that I was showing in a previous video that had the different varnishes on, I airbrushed those at the same time, depending on how many it turns out that I want or need as part of this process. So I just want a nice even colour across the base. Set it down to let it dry. Now, I don't actually expect to get a metal effect from the metal varnish. The metal varnish is there predominantly to give you a varnish that works with something that's already got a metallic effect. And a little bit more purple. So what I'm going to do is, after I've done the purple, I'm going to paint something up with metal and it's going to be one of the larger square bases and may well do two so we can have a wider experiment with the metallic varnish. Um, so again these are just experimenting currently putting the medium on top of paints. The other option is you put your medium in your paint. So I'm going to use another brush, another one of a decent size. and get some of my opalescent medium, Maybe not quite that. What was that, it's not coming off that one, there we go. Mix it live with some purple. Now that is creating a very thick paint. This isn't something you'd want to run through an airbrush, 
I'll do more experiments when I know how it works, thinning it out. Um, but at the moment we're putting on fairly thick, so. That can now go up to the back and dry. Just going to quickly clean, clean off this brush as well. I don't like leaving them lying around dirty. Another drop of purple. And this time I'm going to add a drop of the metal medium. Nearly messed up there and grabbed a base that I didn't want to. Again, if I was airbrushing this, what I would probably do is create the consistency I want and find out the mixture I want to paint on with a brush, then take that and thin that down to work with the airbrush. But another experiment for another day. So let's just paint the metal on here. So this one has actually left it nice and thin, whereas the opalescent made it very thick and I probably even just for normal painting want to have thinned that down a bit. This one goes on really nicely. Um, So with metallics you really need to shake them. You can hear that inside there's even a little metal ball. So this is something we're going to be playing far more with the varnish on. So I'm using some fairly large bases. Again, this is a nice thin metallic. They're designed to go nicely in airbrushes. But all we're really looking for is to see what the effect of different varnishes are on it. So one of these will just have paint and the metallic varnish on it. And the other one will then be varnished matte and then half of it will get metallic varnish over the mat to see what effect that has. Never be worried about experimenting and stopping to experiment and finding tools to experiment with your paints with. It's how we learn. It's valuable time. You can enjoy it as much as everything else. You don't always have to be painting and creating an army. And quite frequently, the fact that you're experimenting will be far more valuable when you come to continue painting your army. I'm going to put a 
bit more silver out of this. That wasn't quite big enough. Because you know what your paints are going to do and how they're going to behave. All of these have a little bit of texture on, but having something to experiment on with lots of texture and with no texture is equally valuable. No texture is easy, you just find a bit of plastic. Um, but if you're looking for textures to practice dry brushing or textured airbrushing, then it's just find something you use every day, something that you notice. Now I haven't, you'll notice this isn't my brush for metallics. The brushes that I'm using here are brushes that don't come out and get used that often. So I'm not that worried about protecting the heads on them in the same way I am my usual ones. Equally, I regularly forget and grab, use normal brush for metallics because I'm in the middle of something. So it's not a fixed rule. So I'm going to clean out this brush and then even more so because I've had metallics on it I'm going to get my proper paint cleaner try not to stick it into the medium and as you can see what I'm doing is I'm getting a good coverage in my paint cleaner getting it right up into the head of the bristles then in to clean it out. Now everything I'm using here is medium so they're not really showing that heavily but with colours you can see quite clearly when your brush is clear and clean. That's one done. You can see there's traces of purple within that, which shows that however clean it looked to the naked eye, it wasn't. So I'm going to come back in and I'm just going to keep going. You can see it's quite purple. Rub it off and try and clean as much of that purple away as I can. So each time I go around, I'll pick up the colour from the last time. So I'm trying to leave it nice and clear. Now I'm also still going to be picking up a little bit of purple colour from the dirty water. Then just a little bit so you've got a small amount of it remaining on your brush to help keep it in good condition. Bad habit but yes I suck on my brushes. I eat paint as the maniac would say. Uh, though not badly enough that I'm going to get into the same kind of discussion he did in one video where he and Vince were discussing which was their favourite flavour. Put the lid back on this. Then I'm going to let everything dry and for you it will be no time, for me it will be a couple of hours when I come back and put on some of the varnishes and have a look at the next stage. So, see you in a few minutes. So, we're back again to see how it's all gone, or at least up till this stage. And this time I've remembered to turn on the front camera. I apologize for the earlier section. And just to go back as I promised in the text, that is the iridescent medium from Winsor Newton. Metal varnish from Vallejo. Metal medium from Vallejo. And last, but by no means least, the little dropper bottle. So, quickly, the first thing we can do. So as you see, that iridescent medium, it might be better later on. It is very iridescent but it's taken over the colour underneath it. The metal medium on pure black looks almost like silver. 
it's just made that black really reflective. <coughs> there we have the mixed iridescent medium. Nowhere near as effective as the primary, but you can see the difference when we compare it. We'll be painting some directly onto there for a better comparison. That's with a mixed in metal medium. So you can see a bit of sparkling, but it's not that metallic with a very basic mix in. So I'll move that back out of the way. And there we have the metal varnish, which is just a very glossy varnish. And get back to colour. So now what we're going to do is we're going to apply some varnish to what we've done to have a look at how the metal varnish compares and how the metal varnish works with a matte varnish and then we're going to overpaint the mediums on a colour. So to make sure I get this right I'm going to start off with the metal medium, plenty of shaking again. I'm just going to do this half and half. So. Again, just trying to thin this down a little. while making sure the spread is even. I suspect that that's going to turn out very similar to the original on black. But we shall see. to the iridescent medium where you can see how thick it is because it's still got the chunks from when I was painting earlier taken out of it. Let's pick up our other purple one. And again we don't want this too thick. I suspect that for regular usage most of this will probably need more experimentation and finding the correct volumes to thin it down by. But we will see how this comes out. So I'm deliberately trying to put it on very thinly. And you can sort of see the purple underneath and it being iridescent so we will see how that comes out and clean off the brush again. I'll just put the lid back on this. So we now have the two experiments to do with the metal. So again, just 
shake up the metal varnish. I'm just going to put a little drop over here. And then going to paint half of this. So I can just see where I've painted when it's at the right angle to the light. See how well it will. There you can see the two halves. We'll see how well they come out. Then there is going to be one more break. I'm going to actually use some light. airbrush based matte varnish which is ridiculously matte and that will literally just suck all of the gloss out of this and I'm going to do that over the entire thing or at least two thirds of it I think so I'll just leave a small section of original but even then with just what's on there if you look you can see the difference between the two so then what I'm going to do is give that time to dry and come back and apply some of the metal varnish over the top and we'll then be able to compare all of the different varnishes and finishes and how they work together. So um, one more dry than paint and then I'll be back in a little while. Back again, let's see how those did. So it's incredibly obvious the matting looking down here. And the effect of the matte varnish. So the metal medium really has to be mixed in because if we look at that one pearlescence not so bad it's very reflective front on on the but if you tweak it to an angle I don't know how well the camera's seeing this let's try holding it up there so again probably wants to be thinned wants to be even thinner than we had it now the last thing we were looking at was going to be metal varnish on the matted metal. So I'm going to quickly find a clean spot on my palette. Get my brush.
So it's a slight improvement there. We go back to this one. And you can barely tell the difference. A little bit under the camera. Not so much under the naked eye. So the metal varnish does a really nice job of keeping your metals looking metal. And you just clean off that brush. The question is how well it brings them back from a gloss varnish, from a matte varnish. The answer appears to be a little, but it still gives you a very matted metal, but we'll see what it's like when it's dry, when we come back again one last time for this one. And yeah, one thing it does tell us is there needs to be more experimentation to find out how to get the metallic mediums and the pearlescent mediums to work really well. Back in a flip. So for the final part, we've done various painting. I even went back and did a couple of secondary tests that I didn't record the um, painting for what during the last drying stage. So we've got some results we can now see. It varies depending on how you see it in the light. But if we start off by looking at the metallic um, varnish and you can see the one that is just metallic varnish and non-metallic varnish you can barely tell any difference even if you move it around in the light you want more of an example without any varnish matte varnish matte varnish then with a coat of the metallic varnish over the top so if you look at that one you see it's taken some of the shine and the metallicness out of it from the matte stage but returned it so it's not quite as shiny as the original but it's certainly a lot better than the matte was here is just the glossy effect that the metallic varnish provides. Um, then we get to this one where I put on two independently mixed versions of the paint. So you've got metallic on the right which has some shine but I wouldn't go as far as when you're comparing it to a true metallic saying it's particularly metallic. Um, but the well mixed pearlescent certainly has a reflective pearlescent element to it. If we then compare it on the middle to the raw. That had had, had to have two coats. The one thing you'll notice with the pearlescents are that it thins out to get enough in. Equally, we could probably have made the purple more metallic with more of the medium but you need a large quantity, so you're going to need multiple layers, otherwise it's not going to work. And then the other bits and pieces that draw that, came to that conclusion. So painted on top, you can see at an angle with no reflection, you can see the purple coming through, but painted on top really isn't that effective. We look at the metallic again over the top it looks very shiny. You can see the purple when you come through at an angle but overall and that does give you more of a metallic. It gives an interesting effect into itself. This is all on heavily textured bases be quite interesting to see what effect the pearl and the metallic have on a smooth surface so I may well try some of those separately 
and then I might report back on the start of another video. Um, but that's the end of this one. As we've seen, I mean, my recommendation would be mix the pearlescent and mix the metallic mediums with your paint. It seems to be far more effective. Um, and the metallic varnish is a very solid option. So if you are going to airbrush a matte varnish for your entire miniature, just to come up and then relift those metallics. Um, some people will do the metallics after the var matte varnishing. Again, that will be even more effective, but you've still got a varnish now that you can put on top of your metallics that will keep them looking as metallic as you want to and not make them look plastically and glossy. So, interesting information, but get some of these things. Go out and experiment for yourself. If you like this video, please give it a like. If you really liked it, click subscribe, hit the bell, and you'll get the notifications when anything else is done. If you want to come and join the chat, you can see links to the Facebook page and to our Discord server, both in the text and on the actual video. Um, come and get involved. Become part of the Hangout. That's what it's all about. It's about everybody coming and enjoying their hobbies together. If you've got other hobbies that don't involve painting, have a look. There are others out there. There are going to be bits on board gaming. Um, so, come and try soon. Bye.